Emilio. And we are going to start our show for you by raising our parrot flag. Now this can be quite a tough job because she's actually quite a small bird. So once she does get it all the way up there to the top, let's give her a big round of applause. Now, I'm going to put her flag away and the next bird that's going to join us is just a baby. Here she is. This everybody is Chucky and she is our baby Triton Cockatoo. And like all babies, Chucky is very, very cute. She can be really nosy, but she also gets really, really tired. <laughs> Even during shows. And there's not much we can do with a tired baby parrot, except pop them in their pram. But Chucky, you don't look very sleepy tonight, not today. You're looking, very, you're looking around at everything. Should we show everybody just how sleepy you are? <laughs> anyway, so I'll pop her in her little pram. Give her a peanut dummy to keep her busy while I find her best friend Trevor. And Trevor knows the bestest way to get Chucky off to sleep. And of course, that is by taking her for a walk all the way to the end of the table. Very nicely done. They might give you a round of applause back for that. <laughs> and now you've had your nap shots, should we show everybody your feet? Parrots have what's called like back derby, which means they've got two toes that face forwards and two toes that face backwards. And it means that they can use their feet just like we use our hands to perform tasks. So she may really like work of pulling her bucket all the way up to receive her little treats. And as she's going to join me over here, you see she's now showing off that beautiful yellow crest. And that's something all cockatoos have. It signals their excitement and interest. So Chucky, are you very excited today? Yeah? Having a good day? Yeah. And the reason she's having such a good day is because she's just learned something new. And that's to show you all her wings. So if she does this, we need to give her a really big round of applause. So Chucky, she you show up on your wings? Yeah. Now she's going to go off that stage and finish off her nap. And we are going to move on to something that I know you're all dying to see today. The only reason you came here. And that is to see a parrot on a bike. <laughs> now everybody thinks it's very easy because a lot of parrot shows do it. But actually when a parrot walks they cross over their feet a bit like a duck. So it can be quite difficult. But Casper here is a bit of an expert. And some of you might be looking at her thinking you recognise her. Has anyone here seen Paddington too? Yeah, a few hands got up. You know there's a parrot in that film, Mr. Feathers? That's actually Casper. So you're all in the presence of a movie star. But not only is she a movie star, she performs all of her own stunts. So Casper, take it away. And there we have it, a parrot riding the bike! But it isn't just Casper that knows how to ride a bike. Because Trevor behind me, the reason he's running up and down is because he's warming himself up. Because he can ride the bike as well. But him and Casper are actually siblings, and they do look really similar. And people always get them muddled up. And as you can imagine, this upsets Trevor. So he insists on doing everything a bit differently. So this is how he rides his bike. Uh. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Well done. <laughs> now, you can go sit up there, and I need you to be quiet for approximately three minutes. Because we're going to move away from parrots. Would you all like to meet a different type of bird? Yeah. Yes. We all look up there. We've been joined by Guy. He's our British bar now. Now for this, everyone needs to be really, really quiet. And I want you to listen carefully because he's going to demonstrate a really important feature he has, and that's his silent flight. So everybody be super quiet and listen really carefully. Well, that was really quiet indeed. And if I was a little mouse, he would easily have been able to sneak up on me. And the reason he can do this is the edges of his flight feathers are hairy and his body is covered in fluffy down feathers. So when he flaps his... You're not an owl! So when he flaps his wings, you don't get any noise from the movement of them. So that is really important when he's trying to sneak up on his prey. But if you all take a look at his eyes when he turns around to have a look at you all, look at their colour and look at how big they are. His eyes are actually so big in fact that there's no room left in his head for any muscles to move them. So they're fixed in place. So to look around, he can't move his eyeballs like you and I, but all he can do is move his neck nearly 260 degrees around. 
which means that he can still see everything, just like mums, dads, and teachers. <laughs> so if you remember that colour, because I'm going to ask you about that a bit later on, but also, if you take a look at his face, it's shaped a little bit like a satellite dish, and this is to direct his sound to his ears, which are located at two different points. He's got one up really high and one down really low. So when he's flying around, he can hear all around him, and as the sound hits his face, it channels it to his ears. But he's done a great job, so let's give Guy a nice big round of applause. And we are going to move back to parrots. One thing that everyone knows about them is they're really, really clever. They've actually been compared to the same intelligence level as a toddler. So here I've got our foreword, it teaches out the about the different shapes and colours. And it's one of Trevor's favourite activities. So he's going to come down and complete it. Now he has got a few features that are going to help him out. The first being that Trevor can see in full colour vision. Much better than you and I because they can also see in ultraviolet. But my favourite feature of Trevor's, check out his run. Doesn't he look like a mini T-Rex? <laughs> and he is making this look very easy. But don't forget his brain is only the size of a grape. So we've done all the easy ones, Trevor. I've got a difficult one now to start. Lots of corners. What do we do with difficult things? <laughs> Throw it on the floor, yeah? Not only do they have the same intelligence level as a toddler, but this comes with the tantrums as well, which they never grow out of. These birds have for way over 60 years. And that is a really long time for our toddler, especially if they're like Trevor. But Trev, I think you can do it if you give it another go. Oh, of course he can! Oh, well, okay, now. So we're going to pop the form board away, and we're going to move back to Al. Earlier on, we were joined by our little Barna. He weighs roughly 300 grams, so he's not very big and not very heavy. The next Al is just a little bit bigger. <laughs> this is Zeus, and she is our European eagle ass. Now, do you all remember I asked you what, to remember the colour of the barn owl's eyes? Does anybody remember what colour they were? Shout it out! Black! Black, like the night. And we can actually tell what time of day an owl is active by their eyes. So the guys were black like the night, making him nocturnal, active at night time. But if you check out Zeus's eyes, they're this gorgeous bright orange colour. A little bit like the sunset and the sunrise. And that makes her crepuscular, meaning that she's active during the early morning and the evening during dawn and dusk. But there's also another type of owl that's active during the day. This is known as being diurnal, and diurnal owls have yellow eyes. But, something else I'd like to point out, can you all see these little ear tufts she's got sticking up on top of her head? They're called ear tufts, but they're actually nothing to do with her hearing. They work the same way Chucky's press works to signal her excitement and interest. So while at the moment they're sticking up, pointing out, it means she's really alert, she's really concentrating on what the leaf is asking her to do. But her ears are located at the same point as the bar now, so one up really high and one down really low. But Zeus has done a really great job, so I think we'll give her a really big clap. Well done, Zeus. We've seen lots of really, really clever birds today. You saw Casper and Trevor on their bike, you were really impressed with that. You even saw Trevor competing in his form board. But, did you ever think you would see a parrot drive a car? No? no? Well, Emilio up here is a very sensible lady driver, just like me. So she's going to come down, pop herself in, and take us for a spin. All the way to the end of the table! Emilio, why did we stop? Oh no. Did we break down? Oh no, I think she fixed it. I guess we'll see. Has she fixed it? Oh, of course she has! That was out of the video. There is no end to that bird's talent. She's also a mechanic. Okay, for this bird, everyone needs to be really, really quiet. Because we're going to come down to the front and he might have some things to say to us all. So everybody be as quiet as we can. Are we going to say hello? Uh -huh. And what's your name? Uh -huh. Scruffy. Would you like a peanut? Would you like a peanut? Uh -huh. Yes, please. He's very polite. <laughs> Scruffy, can you do a whistle? <laughs> Good boy. But he's also been working on his animal impressions. So, Scruffy, can you do a job? Right, everybody. 
can you do a sheep? <laughs> now for my favourite one, Scruffy. Can you do a chicken? Chicken? <laughs> well, they do think you're very funny, Scruffy. Are you funny? <laughs> Should we say bye-bye? Bye-bye? Bye-bye! Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.